Ghislaine Maxwell faces her second week in court to determine if she's guilty of recruiting and grooming young girls for the late Jeffrey Epstein. After Epstein's suicide in 2019, this trial is widely being seen as the last chance for many women who claim they were abused by him. We are getting a close look this morning at the secluded island where the late Jeffrey Epstein is accused of trafficking underage girls. For years, American financier Jeffrey Epstein used his wealth to fund an elaborate sex trafficking operation. Allegations of a pattern and practice of human trafficking, sexual abuse, and forced labor of young women and female children. We know that he was utilizing uh, his private island to bring girls there and essentially trap them there so they couldn't get free and abusing them while they were there on the island. Epstein is thought to have raped or trafficked more than 100 women and girls and used his power and influence to get away with it. He was very good at networking, he was very good at getting in front of people in power, of influence, and then finding a way to compromise them so that he potentially had something to hold against them. This was not a secret, this was the old proverbial well-kept secret. People knew it, it was kind of a secret in public, an open secret. British socialite Ghislaine Maxwell was almost always by his side. When she wasn't being photographed at black tie galas, she allegedly helped run the whole operation. She was a socialite. She went to a lot of parties. She did philanthropy. She knew a lot of powerful men. I see Miss Maxwell as, as really kind of a hunter. And she was trying to bring home game for what she saw as her master, which was Mr. Epstein. Epstein was arrested on charges of sex trafficking in July 2019 and later died in a prison cell. Meanwhile, Ghislaine Maxwell went into hiding. She was arrested nearly a year later. It's kind of sick and really kind of unbelievable that she would do something like that, but I think she saw it as a game. I would hope that anybody that was involved in any of this scheme is very afraid. Maxwell is now facing eight charges, including sex trafficking. Three accusers have testified so far. Two of them were minors when they say the abuse started. All the women say they trusted Maxwell and that she helped facilitate the abuse. She's pleading not guilty. Attorney Lisa Bloom represents several of Jeffrey Epstein's accusers and one of those has made allegations against Maxwell. Lisa Bloom, you attended the first week of the trial. In a nutshell, what is the argument that the prosecution's advancing? The prosecution argues that Ghislaine Maxwell engaged in sex trafficking by recruiting and enticing young girls to come and have sex with Jeffrey Epstein. That's their case in a nutshell. What's the demeanour of the accused Ghislaine Maxwell? She's very serious, straightforward. She's not engaging in any emotional outbursts. She puts her hand on her attorney's shoulder, leans in, talks to them from time to time. Uh, but otherwise, she's just very calm. Of course, she's wearing a mask because of COVID, so it's hard to tell really what might be going on behind the mask. The prosecution's laying out its case at the moment, but is there any sense from the cross-examination by the defence as to what their case is going to be? Yes. The defense said in their opening statement that this is all about money, manipulation and motive. They say that all of the four victims who are testifying in the case are biased because they got large financial awards from Jeffrey Epstein's estate. They say that the civil attorneys, people like me who represented victims in those cases, were manipulating them and that they have a motive to lie. And that's what they've used on cross-examination of the first two victims who have testified so far. And I think that's the theme they're going to use throughout the case. This is such a high-profile case. Is it possible to deliver a truly fair trial? It's definitely possible. I've been personally doing high profile cases for over three decades, and I can assure you that jurors rise to the occasion. They may have heard something about it in the media, but when they get into the courtroom with all of the solemnity and the judge and the evidence, uh, they really want to do the right thing. They want to decide the case based on the witnesses and the evidence, and I think that they will. Jeffrey Epstein, as we know, is dead. To play devil's advocate, is it possible that Ghislaine Maxwell will pay a higher price than she otherwise would have simply because somebody has to be accountable and obviously Jeffrey Epstein isn't going to be. 
Well, it's always possible. And Ghislaine's defense is that really this case is about Jeffrey Epstein and she's being blamed for the sins of Jeffrey Epstein. And that's not fair. But the prosecution has been very careful with each of the three victims who's testified so far to talk, yes, about what Jeffrey Epstein did, but also about what Ghislaine Maxwell did, that she was the one who met these girls, who brought them in, who encouraged them to give the massages to Jeffrey Epstein, which were sexualized, and that she was sometimes present during these inappropriate actions and that sometimes she even participated in them. So it's really about her and what she did and not so much about Epstein. Has there been much discussion so far and will there be regarding high profile figures such as Prince Andrew? Yes. So a lot of uh, celebrity names have come out in this trial. For example, the pilot testified as to who was on the plane. Donald Trump, Bill Clinton, Prince Andrew, the actor Chris Tucker, the violinist Yitzhak um, Perlman. And we have heard about Mar-a-Lago, Donald Trump's uh, country club, uh, from a number of witnesses that some of the young girls were brought there by uh, Jeffrey Epstein. So there may be more to come. Stay tuned. You're representing eight Jeffrey Epstein victims. What has been the lasting impact on them of their association with Epstein and Maxwell? It's really a heartbreaking lifetime of trauma and post-traumatic stress. Some of my clients had only one incident with Epstein when they were quite young, teenagers, and it had a dramatic impact on their lives. One of my clients at that time was a model. She gave up modeling entirely. She left New York City. Uh, she just couldn't deal with the fallout, had a lot of substance abuse problems. Other clients of mine had hundreds of incidents with him because they were young, because they needed the money, because they kept going back, because they had no one to tell. It takes a long time for victims to really understand what's happening. Uh, so they all have very serious psychological injuries that they'll be dealing with for the rest of their lives. So there's a criminal action. When that's done, what happens next? What happens with the potential civil cases? Well, you're right that the civil and the criminal cases proceed on two different tracks. And we have already fought our cases with the Victim Compensation Fund and won all eight out of eight, I'm pleased to say. I think other victims are still fighting their cases. As to Ghislaine Maxwell, there are civil cases, I think, outstanding against her. Uh, but I think this is probably the last criminal prosecution we will see related to Jeffrey Epstein. And does the outcome of the criminal matter have any bearing on the likelihood for victims who are seeking compensation regarding whether or not they'll be successful in pursuing that? Yes, it certainly helps anyone who has claims against Ghislaine Maxwell if she is criminally convicted because it's a higher standard of proof in a criminal case. So if she's found guilty there, at least for the four victims in the case, um, they would have a, a very strong case against her on the civil side. Lisa Bloom, thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.